LPW as a, as a company within additive manufacturing is part of a disruptive wave. My feeling is if companies that are established in aerospace don't move into using additive manufacturing, they'll get left behind. We already see that in some of the supply chains, we see that in investment casting. So I think the key message is, unless they engage with this technology, then they're going to get, they're going to get left behind. The, the reason why I think a number of manufacturers are not engaging in, with additive manufacturing is in addition to the cost of the technology, it's, it's knowledge around the technology, around its know-how. They don't know what it can do, and they don't know its potential, but they don't, they don't know that it's potential to disrupt what their current business is. So it's not that it can add to their business, it can actually, by not engaging, it will, it will severely take away from their business. But I think it's not strictly speaking through that companies are not engaging. There's plenty of companies that are engaging, that are qualifying parts. My feeling in a, in an anecdotal sense is that many of those companies are not based within the UK. So I'd say non-UK based businesses are more advanced and more aggressive in their pursuit of this technology. Okay, so we're not a traditional materials company. And additive manufacturing isn't a traditional uh, technology. So when we sell our material to a company, we're not just uh, selling to them and walking away. We need to engage with them, we need to explain to them, we need to show them how this technology will change their, their business and how materials will be more integral into their manufacturing cycles. A key example of that, in additive manufacturing, the, the material is used and reused. It's repeatedly used within the printer until it's melted to form a part. So the first time that that powder is supplied to the, to the user, yes, we are the supplier. But actually the second time and the third time, the fourth time, we are no longer the supplier. It's the, the, uh, the customer themselves are now supplying that material back into that process. So all of the risks and the liabilities and the problems fall upon them. So we need to help with them. We need to help them and engage with them to help solve those problems. Uh, so it, it's the way of selling and the way of working in additive manufacturing has to be more of a consultative and relationship driven approach. We, we like to think it's across the whole course of the business yeah. and the whole breadth. So we, we, we have actually divided our products into two ranges. One is what we call powder range, which is very much an e-commerce type of business. You, you, the order comes in, it ships within 48 hours. The, the other one is powder life, and it's the whole, the powders, the products, the software, the sensors, the consultancy, and it's all merged into one. So we like to think that we're not just selling the powder, we are going in and solving those problems, but we don't do it in a way of, of a consultancy firm, it's part of the whole sale, it's part of the package that you get when you're, when you're working with us as a business. Okay, first question, why? Uh, we can have the best equipment in the world and the best buildings in the world and the best patents around using these equipment, but at the people it's nothing. Uh, the, people are, are the, are the people are there that make our sales, that make our products and develop our solutions, so people are integral. How do we do it? Uh, good question. We're learning, we're trying, we're trying different approaches. I think the key thing that we look to do is engage with the person and empower them. So it's not a case of me running a business and telling people what to do. I almost want them to tell me what to do. I want to have teams of people that understand their problems. I want them to feel empowered that if they come up with a solution to make that, you know, to, to eliminate that problem, that they have the power and the right and to, to, do, to, to do that work and they're not going to have management coming down on them and criticising them. So I think empowerment is a key, key part of that. Okay, so, okay. so we are a technology-driven company. Uh, for example, we're, we're paperless. Um, hopefully when you go into our offices, you, on our shop floor, you don't see any papers going around. Everything is in a digital format. We record data across the business. We have sensors going into every single different machine. We analyse everything, and I love data. The one place I don't like data is with people. I make a point of every day walking around of our shop floor. Our whole factory is built around open plan. To me, people can't be boiled down or divided down into, into, into different, different data, data sets and you can't support them through a digital form like an app. To me, it's just traditional communication. So we're very much the other way around. We're trying to restrict the, the use of of emails, we're trying to restrict the use of uh, teleconferencing, we're trying to get people to talk, just to talk. That to me is the best way. And for me and the management team to actually talk with people and not do it through a digital form. So for a tech company, we're very on tech when it comes to people.